it's 10.30 at night. Just realized that uh, <clears throat> without meaning to, I spent the last four days completely going over my workshop. Um, I started out looking at the shop after I got the guitar that I'm making done, except for the finish put on it. And um, I said, gee, I gotta clean the shop up, uh, get all the dust out of here before I, I start finishing the guitar. So, uh, I started to sweep, then I started doing some other stuff, and I spent the entire day just sort of kind of thinking about where I was going to rearrange things and do stuff and, and then I spent the next three or four days uh, doing that. Um, the shop, which has been, had a major kind of revamping or rearranging twice in the last 15 years, with a lot of smaller ones too, and a lot of cleaning. Um, but this time I, uh, I did it again, uh, made a few major changes and uh, a lot of minor ones. Um, but boy, the stuff I've collected, getting it rearranged and, and, and uh, put in the right place was, was quite a job. During this pandemic, we stay home a lot. Uh, we're, we're serious about it. Uh, my wife and I pretty much go out to get groceries when we have to. So that um, I have a lot of time for stuff. Uh, it's late fall now, but boy, all the stuff outside for the yard work and winterizing get done in record time this year. Uh, pandemic is, is bad, but there are some good things about it. Things get done. Uh, you don't go anywhere to spend any money, so it just sort of saves. Um, there's always Amazon though. And after a while you just like order stuff and then you start ordering stupid stuff. Um, but um, the guitar is all finished. Finished except for the uh, varnishing now, so I suppose I can I can get to that next and, and finish it all up, and then uh, put the fretwork on it and um, string it up and see if it works. Uh, so that'll be the next thing I do. But take a look at the workshop. Before we begin, this is the workshop as I originally fixed it up almost 20 years ago. Um, new, for, new coat of paint, I took out a middle section, took out an entire wall to make it twice as big. Drafting table over there, which I never ever use, but it was kind of pretty. An iMac computer for music, which I never use, I'd rather have a radio. Um, there's a bench there, a uh, workbench called the Newfangled Workbench. It was pretty nice, vices and stuff, but you know, I do a lot of work by machine. I don't do a lot of hand work. Um, that set of drawers over there on that cabinet just took up too much floor space. The drawers opened hard and um, they would just get junky. And in the foreground, you can see my old Rockwell Delta contractor's table saw, which uh, had its issues. It was good for ripping wood. And oh, I made a box fan uh, over there to take the dust out of the air with a, a filter on it, uh, that, but that, that just doesn't work. Um, so I made a bunch of changes since then, and I don't have pictures of that, but um, this, these are the changes that, um, that I made in the last few days. Let's start off with the view of the shop as you uh, walk into it through this door. One of the things I did, a small thing, but it made a big difference, is I changed the orientation of the saw. This is my uh, saw stop. It's a uh, wonderful piece of machinery, by the way. Um, but it used to be at right angles. Now it's diagonally from corner to corner. And as a result, I've been able to walk around the saw more easily from side to side. And I have a larger infeed and outfeed section. 
Over the years, this is how my um, idea for a workbench has evolved. Uh, if you remember previously, I showed you the um, workbench that I had made called the Newfangle Workbench. It had all kinds of vices and clamps and worked really, really good for planing and that sort of thing. Well, I find out that uh, I have some good power tools and I don't use them too much. Um, so, Got rid of that, actually gave it to my son-in-law, it's in his garage now. And um, I built this assembly table. Um, as you can see, the miter slides over it, um, which is just fine. Um, and when I have wood or sheet goods, um, it just slides onto the table, or sometimes I'll put a little, a little um, spacer underneath if I, if I need to, but usually I don't. Um, the table has, right near the stool, right there, is powered, so it plugs into the wall over there, and on both sides there are plugs in it. Uh, there's storage space um, on both sides of it, an open storage space on the right, on the left there are two doors with slide-out um, drawers. It looks beat up now, it looks old, um, it's got a... A, uh, a top and sides that can be replaced. This is just pin nailed on so that uh, it can be pried up. This is hardboard, 8 inch hardboard. A new piece can be put on. These are put on the screws, just two by fours. I can put new ones on. I haven't done that yet. I sand it a little bit once in a while. Uh, it's going on 10 years old now. Really serves its purpose. Quite heavy. You can pound on it. Um, it doesn't vibrate. Um, it's been really good and it's a very large surface. If you want to do some small work on it, sit at a stool, or if you want to um, uh, you know, put a large object on it, like a cabinet you're making, um, it's really nice. It's also on very good wheels so that I can move it right out into the middle of the shop so that I can walk around. These are my clamps, lots of small ones, some longer ones and various size cabinet clamps. Um, never enough, but I'm doing pretty good. Um, up here there's a switch. Um, right below my feet, right here in the garage, is an 80 gallon air compressor, um, which is plumbed up here with the hose. And um, I've got air. I try to do a lot of air tools um, because it's just very convenient and they don't wear out like the electric ones do. Um, I do do some spraying, spray gun. There is a pull down attic uh, with a, a set of actual stairs that comes down. They slide down that I built. Um, and there's a reasonable amount of storage space up there. I keep a lot of stuff that I absolutely don't use and uh, wood that I might want to uh, hold on to uh, for uh, future use. This small area over here, I really re reworked. Um, this was just a cluttered, crowded area. It still is a little bit. I moved my drill press over um, onto um, this side of the room because I really don't need a lot of outfeed or room for this. Um, I do have a, a grinder on a stand, which uh, comes in handy once in a while, but I just need it out of the way. Um, I have a scroll saw over here, which is, of course, everything's on wheels. Um, I can pull out when I want to use it, but I don't use it that much. Um, but when I do, it's really handy to have. And uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, um, portable roller stands that I put on uh, shelf racks up there. Here in Maine, um, it can get pretty cold. Right now it's about 35 degrees and it's just fall. So it'll be a lot of uh, below freezing in the 20s uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Um, this is a monitor heater. It's a kerosene heater that's meant to heat about 1,200 square feet in the house. They're extremely reliable and they're extremely efficient. They're meant to um, uh, connect to uh, like a 240 gallon barrel out of doors. Um, when I had a new one put in the house, a more efficient one, I took the one in the house, I brought it out here, and I plumbed it up to this uh, tank that, um, that I just tip on its side and um, that few gallons, that couple of gallons, um, when I come out in the shop on, uh, every few days, uh, will last a month. So I can heat this place for a song. 
Um, these things are 96% efficient. Uh, they're a really amazing devices, and it'll heat this space up. In literally 10 minutes, I'm down to my shirt sleeves. And this is my French cleat wall. Um, everything on here um, is movable. For example, this hammer has a holder. And if you've never seen a French cleat, it's really a, for, uh, a, a backing that has a 45 degree angle. And these strips of plywood that are on here also have 45s in them. And snap it in like that. And you can put your tools on. It's even this has been rearranged several times. I try, I try to put the tools I'm going to use the most sort of over here, and the ones that I don't use much over to the side over there. But um, you can just rearrange all of the uh, holders on here, or make new ones. Here I have a, a box that has some random drills in it, and it's got a cleat on the back, and it just hangs right there. And it actually works quite well, quite well. Um, I was going to put pegboard up. Pegboard is just with all the little wires and stuff. What a, what a pain in the neck. The French cleat board is a great thing to do. I have some strapping on the back, one eighth inch Luan plywood, a quarter inch rather Luan plywood, and then just a bunch of strips out of you know sheet of plywood. You can get you know a bunch of eight foot strips out of this, and just uh, I glued them and nailed them on and uh, really works good. Highly recommend it. What to do with and where to put cutoffs is always a problem. Um, way back I made this box and it's also on wheels so I can pull it around and it was over there by the drill press now it's here by the window and uh, just keeping out of the way and keeping it organized is, is a pain in the neck. Eventually I end up taking a lot of the small pieces and uh, you know using them for kindling. Um, I only save things that are really useful and uh, stuff that costs a lot, you know, like walnut and maple and things like that. Um, I bought that with a cover over it right now is a built-in air conditioner. Um, on Craigslist, you can always find a working air conditioner, and this is a large one. It's like uh, 18,000 BTUs. Um, it's getting older now, so it doesn't cool quite as good as it used to. Um, I keep a, 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 a wooden cover over it that has um, insulation on the inside of it in the winter. And in the summer, it uh, makes it so that uh, it's cool in here. Even in Maine, you know, 80, 85 degree days during the summer are not uncommon. Um, so uh, it makes it pleasant to work in here in the summer, just as it does the heat in the winter. Keeping longer pieces of wood is also a problem, particularly in the limited space. Um, I do keep some stuff, if I buy, I happen to buy a, quite a few pieces that I'm not going to use right away, up in the attic. And then um, I have these shelves that I built on the wall that I, I keep of pieces that, you know, that if I'm going to be using some soon, I, I, I have it, you know, in mind that I still have it and uh, I don't have to go buy any more. If you don't have it out where you can see it or remember, sometimes you really don't even know what you have and you end up going buying another piece when you have it right up on the shelf. Um, still not a great solution, but you got to do something and this is one thing that fills its role. Now one of the major things I did in this rearranging, uh, which took a, you know, a good part of a day, was in this corner there used to be a dust collector. A one horsepower Delta dust collector with the big cloth bags on, you know, going up and down. You've seen them. And uh, I don't have tremendous dust collection. But I do have dust collection that works pretty good for here. I have a planer um, over here. I have a jointer. And I've got a router table. Dust collector was here. I still have a bracket there because I had it uh, um, stood up and, uh, and embraced there. Um, what I did was I was very, very tired of having the dust collector up here. One, it was noisy. Two, it took up some room. And most importantly, it's not the best dust collection in the world. I am not going to go out and buy a $1,300, $1,400 dust collector system with the, with the, the Cyclone and the filter bags for one micron and the pleated filters and all that stuff. And there is a haze 
of dust over all of the walls. So no matter how good the dust collector collected the sawdust and the chips, the dust comes out through the bag. It's not healthy for one thing and um, uh, it makes a mess. You know, these walls were lighter colored. Now they're all tan because of the dust. And I, and, I, and I clean them. I wipe them down once in a while. So my solution was to get rid of the dust collector, but still keep it. Underneath this garrison shop is a two-car garage. It's a two-car garage in here with an 18-foot door. Um, my air compressor is down there, like I said, beneath my feet. Well, right now, beneath my feet right here is my dust collector. What I did was is I plumbed it down through a piece of PVC pipe downstairs. Um, I have, a, I have a, a plug here that runs on a switch next to my table saw. So I can flip a dust collector on, it turns on downstairs, and I can run uh, these tools. And um, it actually does a very good job of collecting the chips and the sawdust from the tools. Uh, it works really good. It's that dust that comes out through the bag. Now that'll be down in the garage, which I don't care about. It'll get dusty down there. Um, and I don't keep the cars down there either, uh, mainly because I own a F-150 pickup truck and the ceiling height is one inch too, too low to accept it. Every truck I buy um, over the years has gotten taller and taller. So that, that is in a, a rhino lining shelter um, across the street. Um, but um, the dust collector is downstairs and I'm looking forward to this being a lot less dusty as a result. This is the router table. It has a three and a quarter horsepower Triton router in it. It's not spectacular, but it works really good. I'm not a precision sort of guy. Well, I am, but I don't have precision miter gauges and sort of what I do is, um, is I make a cut, sneak up on it and scrap wood when I get it right, and then I do the cuts. This planer, it's a seven, DW734 DeWalt, has been unbelievably good. I've put thousands and thousands of board feet through this thing. I've gone through three sets of knives um, and the thing's still going strong and it does a very, very good job. There's my old Craftsman Jointa circa 1970 something. Um, it's not super accurate, um, but what I do is I use it to, to take down the edge of a board to get it square and then I use a table saw to finally, um, you know, match it to the other side to make the sides parallel. Um, so it does start the initial straightening and flattening process of the wood, then the planer or the table saw kind of finish, finish the job. All my jigs, by the way. And back to dust collection, I have a short run of four inch pipe that handles three items. And that's about all the dust collector will do as far as that's concerned. Dust collection for the table saw. I had a piece of PVC running across the ceiling and across to the dust collection system that was in the corner. But it just wasn't powerful enough to draw the stuff from the table saw. The cabinet would, would, would fill with sawdust and I have to clean it out. Love to have dust collection for this. I took that pipe down, it wasn't worth it. Um, shop backs don't work for dust collection for, for power, power tools. They're, they're point of contact, you gotta be really close. Um, it's good for a sander, things like that, but other than that, no. So what I'm going to do is when they go on sale, I'm gonna pick up a, a Harbor Freight dust collector and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the other one. Right on the floor, in that corner, um, I'm going to put it down into the garage and I'm going to uh, put another piece of PVC through the floor and plug the saw into it. And I know that'll take care of it. And of course, the fine dust coming out through the back will stay in another room downstairs. This area um, has definitely changed over the last year. Um, it used to be just an, an open area. And if you remember, this is where the, uh, the drafting table was that I had way back, you know, 15 years ago. Um, I decided to uh, make fishing lures. Um, start making fishing lures because I do live in a lake, hence craftsmen on the lake. And um, I uh, built this corner very simply to, uh, to do that with. I just took a piece of plywood, put it across an existing set of drawers, over to a file cabinet, put up a few shelves. Um, I have a paper roller here that I pull out because I do a lot of 
airbrush painting. You can see the airbrush um, over there by the window on the bench. Um, that is the guitar that I've been building. And um, the reason this whole thing started, um, as far as rearranging the shop and doing a major cleaning, is what I, I wanted a clean shop. I wanted to be able to do some finishing on it um, with the varnish. Um, so the cleaning actually got out of hand, but, uh, but uh, now it's done, and uh, that'll be my next project. Um, over in the corner is a bench that was there, was always there. Um, I have a few things up on the wall, still kind of figuring out what I want to use that space for after all this time. It was really more of a collection area for, for stuff, junk. Um, now it uh, sees some use. I moved my UV curing chamber that I made over there from the fishing lures over in the corner. My lead pot is there. Um, sandpaper rack um, over on the wall. And up there is a saw blade clock that does not work anymore, but I bought that when I first uh, set up the shop 15 years ago in here. And uh, I just thought I'd leave it up because it just, just looks good, even though the mechanism, uh, even if I put a battery in it, doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to work. Over on this side of the room, I have another dust collection system set up. It's very short and it goes to a shop back. And this does work because this stuff just really makes dust. And it goes into the vents, it's like almost point of contact, so this will produce enough such to pull it in. Everything is gated just like on the other side of the room so I can turn things you know, on and off as I want to. Um, bandsaw, I bought this when I was 22 years old, it's still running great, it's not, not the greatest bandsaw in the world, but it, 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 you know, it cuts on a curve like I want it to, does some re too. Um, Harbor Freight belt sander that uh, is probably about 10 years old now, no, about 15 years old. Um, and uh, this has been actually pretty good. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, considering Harbor Freight stuff, you know, it can be shady here and there, but it's worked really good. Um, this is a belt sander that I bought at the same time as the, uh, as the band saw. Um, 1976, maybe, right around there. Uh, this has been very good. This has had a lot of mileage over the years, and it's still running good. I have it vertical now, and I use it as a, uh, an edge sander, and this one uh, is, a, is a flat sander. Um, there was a large set of cabinets with the drawers here that I just found totally useless, and, and benches against wall I have no use for against walls. So I took that out. These cupboards I had built over that at the time and they're still used for, for storage. This room right in there, I have the door open. Um, it's not very big. It's about 12 feet by about six feet wide. Uh, was made as a hobby room. There's a bench in there with lots of drawers and stuff, but I was using it really just as a junk storage area. But I did, after 15 years, clear it out. I threw so much stuff away and did a lot of Craigslist stuff. It was an electronics hobby shop. Um, now um, I'm using it to do some, some decent storage. My, my workshop system is in there for sharpening, which I don't use all the time. Um, a lot of my paints and, and spray stuff, some electronic equipment and miscellaneous things. It's much more organized and there are drawers in there too. And we're back near the, the entrance door. I acquired this file cabinet on Craigslist for nothing. Um, just a few weeks ago, and it uh, weighs 278 pounds um, because it's got a weighted base. So that even if you have something with a little net, like this thing with all the screws, um, and the drawer pulls out really far, it won't tip over. You can open up all these drawers that if they have a lot of weight in them, and each drawer holds 140 pounds. Um, so I haven't filled all of these up yet, but um, that's a good thing because uh, they get filled up quickly enough. Um, over here is my Lincoln uh, stick welder, um, which um, I, uh, not a great welder, but when I do weld, um, it's nice to have something when you want to hook two pieces of metal together. Um, I have a hole in the floor over there so that the uh, leads go out into the driveway and I can weld outdoors. I also have a small Lincoln um, MIG welder downstairs on a cart that I made. And up in the corner here is the electrical box. Um, it's 
120 or 60 amp so that I have plenty of room for any uh, 220, uh, 220 tools that I have, like, like the saw and, and all of the other stuff too that's just regular 110. Um, so I'm very fortunate that way. And one last little thing has to do with the lighting. Um, these are recessed two by four foot light fixtures that you would put in a recessed hung ceiling. You can get them on Craigslist. Sometimes they give them away a dozen at a time as they take them out of stores and so forth. You see them all the time. What I did was I screwed them to the ceiling and then boxed them in with some uh, uh, sanded plywood and they have nice diffusers on them. And I took out, over the years, I took out all of the um, all of the ballasts and the fluorescent tubes because they started to go bad. And I replaced them with just porcelain sockets um, and then put in three or four 60 watt LED light bulbs so that um, each light um, has uh, 180 to 240 watts in it, each light fixture. Um, the bulbs will supposedly last pretty much forever the way I'm using them. They're bright white so that they throw a lot of light and I have them all over the shop. And I actually have a couple more that I want to put up. And each um, fixture has you three or four hundred watts of regular bulbs in them, but literally they take uh, uh, about twenty or twenty-five watts per fixture because of their L because of them being LED. And in the winter, when I come out and it's cold, before I put the stove on, they go on instantly. Fluorescent lights will just flicker for ten minutes till they warm up, which is not fun. And some people have asked how I do my recording because it's okay; it's not the best. Um, wasn't going to pay $900 for a vlogging camera. So what I have is I have a 1080 DP webcam, a Logitech webcam, um, that I feed through my laptop. So here's the laptop recording stuff. Um, and uh, then I bring it in the house and uh, you know, put it on the computer and uh, go from there. And here's a recording uh, from the computer directly through its uh, camera showing my little camera on a tripod that um, I use for doing all my videos. Um, maybe someday I'll get another camera, but I don't think so. This one costs about 80 bucks, and, uh, and I also use it for, for video conferencing in the house too. So it's uh, definitely a cost-effective thing that works pretty good. So, Thanks for watching this, probably of only real interest to people who have shops, and then maybe not that much either. Um, but uh, this was really more cluttered and, and, and more disorganized. Um, I, I took three 30, 40 gallon trash bags, four of them, uh, to the dump, um, and then put a lot out on the lawn and gave a lot on Craigslist. So this is a, another major redoing of the shop.